Welcome to NetIQ's Migrating to Hyper-V session. My name is Michael Reed and I'm a Senior Technical Engineer at NetIQ. In today's session, I'll be demonstrating how PlateSpin Migrate 11.1 can help you to migrate to Hyper-V faster. So let's get started. PlateSpin Migrate is an anywhere to anywhere migration tool that gives you the ability to manage your migrations across different infrastructures. Many data centers today house a mix of different infrastructures, some being virtual and some being physical. Placement Migrate gives you the flexibility to migrate from a physical to a virtual platform or virtual to virtual, or even virtual back to physical and even physical to physical. And for more difficult migrations, you have the option to do X to image and image to X migrations, the X represents a physical or a virtual machine. Because in certain scenarios, staging migrations may be necessary. How does Placement Migrate work? During, migra uh, during a migration, Placement Migrate copies the OS and the data layers over to it, the target, and then decouples the underlying hardware drivers. Once the data and OS layers are copied, Migrate then goes through the process of injecting new infrastructure drivers on the target. Once all the supported drivers are have been installed, Migrate then orchestrates any configuration changes needed on the target operating system. For example, you could change the IP address, the name and domain information, or it could be as simple as resizing the C or D drive on the target operating system. Placement Migrate gives you full control over your migrations, allowing you to plan and schedule, do incrementals, all before going live. I will talk more about these features during the demo. Let's talk about Hyper-V support. Placement Migrate allows you to do a fully automated migration uh, from any VMware to Hyper-V 2012. You can also use Placement Migrate to migrate your physical servers, if you want to, to Hyper-V. Placement Migrate supports Windows 2000 all the way up to 2012. Migrate can also automate and virtualize your Linux servers too. UEFI and GPT support or formats are supported also. Let's talk about mass migrations. Placement Migrate can scale from 1 to 10 migrations all the way up to thousands of migrations. You can use the GUI interface to do all your migrations or you can choose to use our command line interface and script out all your migrations. The command line interface gives you the control to script and run jobs you can kick off a migration in a particular order or even script an incremental to kick off before you cut over to production. All jobs that are scripted can be tracked uh, live in the PlateSpin Migrate user interface under the Jobs tab. Here's an example of a typical migration cycle using PlateSpin Migrate. It's broken down into four steps. First step is to take the initial copy, or you can call it a baseline. Uh, once you have that baseline, um, now you can move on to stage two and you can start to test and validate. So I can pass that copy onto the test team or the application owner and they can validate that, me, me moving it from a physical to a virtual or virtual to virtual uh, migration that the application still functions and everything's good to go uh, for us to cut it over into production. Um, then I can come back, it could be a week later, it could be two to three weeks later, I can go back and do, uh, or I can, now I can go back and do an incremental, uh, update uh, the, 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 the target so that I can cut it over into production, which would be step four. So this is a typical scenario of what uh, you would do to do a, a typical migration. You would do that initial copy, you get through the test and validation stage, uh, then you would do it in incremental or server sync that we like to call, and then you would cut it over into production. It's that simple. So let's go to the demo. Let me walk you through a typical VMware to Hyper-V migration. 
So what you're looking at here is our GUI interface to the Platespin Migrate server. Uh, this is a client. This client can either be run on the Platespin server or it can be run on your desktop. So you can see on the left it gives you a view. There's a servers view and a jobs view. Right now we're in the servers view where we can see all the servers that have been discovered. Um, there's also a jobs view there you can actually see your actively running jobs. You also have got your tasks here and what you can do. You can do a copy, you can do a move, or you can capture an image, or you can deploy an image. For this demo, um, we're going to do a virtual uh, migration of a uh, Windows 2008 server to Hyper-V. So to get started, and I've already done this, um, I went through what we call a discovery phase. So I've discovered my source, and I've already discovered my target. Uh, so they're already populated into the interface. Um, you just need a host name and an IP address in order to uh, be able to start the process of discovery and of course a username and a password. And then you hit the discover and then we reach out and we'll go and actually gather this information uh, from the source and target. So if I right click on here and I go to the properties, because I've already pre-discovered these machines, um, you can see what they're made of. So it gives me the make and model of the server, how much memory, how many CPUs uh, th that are available, uh, the drive sizes, um, you know, if they're physical drives or if they're SCSI drives, um, they, they'll show up in here. Uh, they can be SAN drives too, they'll show up. Um, you also see the networking information, the type of the NIC, uh, the IP addresses, uh, DNS servers, default gateway. This, all these details need to be known before we can mi migrate from one environment to another environment. So if I'm taking a virtual machine and I'm moving it over to Hyper-V, you know, what subnets are available there? We need to know all this so that we can orchestrate and make these changes as we do the migration, as I was saying in earlier. So once I have that, I can go ahead and I can start the process. I can either click on copy or move. Uh, for this for this demo, let's do a move. So now that we've selected move workload, you'll see now another box pops up. And you, on the left side, you see your source machines. And on the right side, you see your targets. So for this migration, uh, for this move, we're going to pick uh, the 2008 test machine and we're going to move it over to my Hyper-V server here. So I'm going to start uh, the wizard and it gives me some options because during the migration there's some changes that I might want to make and this is going to give me the ability to go in and you know fine-tune the target for when I do that final move. So if I go under replication, it gives me different options uh, under the replication feature. So I have the, the option to do a, a file-based transfer or block-based transfer. Um, I can select what the end state of the source machine is and the target machine. So if I don't want the source to shut down during the migration, uh, when the migration is finished, I can unselect the shutdown option and it will stay up. And then the target, I can have the same options. I can turn it off, or I can keep it on, or I can suspend it. Um, if I choose to keep the source and the target on, then I'm going to need to make a copy of the source machine, not a, a move. On the final move, we shut down the source and bring up the target, and we cut it over into program production. So we orchestrate that shutdown of the source, bringing up of the target so that you don't have to do it. Then we have some networking options. In the networking options, you have the ability to compress. If you're going across a WAN, if you need to throttle, you don't want to use all the bandwidth that's available uh, because other people are sharing that same bandwidth, then um, you have the ability to choose uh, throttling. I also have the ability to either run this job now or I can schedule to run later, like at midnight when during my change control. So I can configure and set everything up uh, right now, uh, but not run it till later on or you know, another day. Uh, of course, I'm going to have to make sure that I have the right access to be able to log into my source and target. Um, so I can validate that by testing just to verify before I start a job. If there's any type of alerts 
that I want sent out. So say the job fails for some reason, then I can get an email alert. Or if it's complete, I just want to know when it's complete. Or if there's something that needs to be done in order for it to be completed, then I can have that information sent to me uh, to notify me that uh, I need to either come take a look or it's finished or there's a failure. And during the migration, I'm going to need a temporary IP address uh, in order to do the migration. So I will need to configure uh, on the correct network um, the, the IP address that can be used, or I can just use DHCP. And for this migration, I'm going to use DHCP. <clears throat> So in here, it's already telling me this name uh, already exists, and it's just because I've done uh, a migration before as a test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name to underscore test, uh, just so that uh, it's something different. And I'm going to move this to the E drive, because that's the uh, location and the path to where um, I'm storing all my uh, VMs for Hyper-V. And of course I want the uh, integration of the services installed uh, automatically so I can orchestrate that. And for this one, I instead of having one gig of memory, I'm going to give it uh, four gigs of memory. And then I move on down to the networking information. Um, so this is the name of the machine that is going to be on the network. Uh, so I'm going to make it the same as uh, the virtual machine name. And I'm going to keep it in the work group. If it was a domain and I wanted to either keep it in the domain or switch domains, I would have to enter the, the credentials uh, right here. And then it would use those credentials in order to either remove it from the domain or join the domain. And if I wanted to take a look at the hard drive, uh, configurations. If I want to make any changes uh, here, I could. If I wanted to make it a thin drive, I could. Um, it, it, this is where I would be able to make those changes for the drive size. And that's all I really need to do in order to start the migration. So let's now that we've uh, done all this, let's kick this off and let's run the migration. So I'm going to hide this here and I'm going to show you what the job looks like as it's running. So if I open it up here, you're going to see some tasks that are going to start to populate in here. And these are all the tasks that show as the job progresses. You can see real time what's happening. A green check mark means that it has completed that task. If the job halts for any reason, you will get a visual marking indicating what went wrong. Red means that the job has failed, and orange means you may need to, to make some changes before the job will continue. Let's wait for this job to finish. We can then log into the target VM.
Now that the job is done, let's go take a look at the Hyper-V server. So let me launch the Hyper-V manager. And here you can see our test machine, the 2008 test machine that we migrated. So let's now try to connect to it. I'm going to log in just to make sure that our password works. So far so good. What I'm going to do is just as a quick test, I'm going to try to launch the internet. And I am on the internet. So looks like our migration was successful. And that's the end of our demo. Thank you for joining NetIQ's Migrating to Hyper-V session.